not surprisingly, the debt crisis dominated our conversation. Take a listen. We have some uh, problems in some member states. Um, and our challenge is now to solve our budget problems in some member states, take Spain, Portugal, Ireland, of course, Greece, and maybe Italy. But um, on a mid and long term, what we need is some growth, uh, some competitiveness of our industries, and we have a European a currency. And so we need more and more a common political approach. Um, we have to harmonize taxation, we have to uh, coordinate um, economic um, uh, policies. Uh, let me say we need a United States of Europe. Markets want euro bonds. They want a banking union. They want fiscal integration. Are, is Europe going to deliver on those measures? Uh, we have to realize the ESM before 1st of July means 500 billion euro uh, in a common uh, framework for everybody who needs um, uh, help for his budgets in our member states. Additionally, the EFSF will work longer as planned, will work one year longer. And so I think these two instruments are key. Europe bonds may be at the end of the process will be an additional instrument, but not now, because um, to have Euro bonds now means not to have so many obligations in member states as you should have for to solve their own structural problems, namely in Spain and Italy. Does Greece have to stay in the Euro? I would prefer uh, Greece in the Eurozone, but it's up to um, the Greek voters. And afterwards, it's up to the new government uh, after Greek election uh, Sunday uh, this week. How disruptive might a Greek exit or a Spanish exit be for uh, the Eurozone, in particular for delivery of energy across the region? I'm sure that we are strong enough and that we are flexible enough to hold them all in the Eurozone and the EU. And uh, another option is not a good option, not for Spain, not for other member states, and not for the EU as a whole. Okay, United States of Europe, that was some pretty strong language uh, from the Energy Commissioner there. Louisa, I just want to quickly come back to this question about Iran and the sanctions that are looming July 1st. In some ways, it's giving some cover for this meeting for the Saudis and others to push for higher production targets precisely to offset the crude that will be lost. Iran, of course, would like the world to feel more of an impact from the loss of its crude in order to maybe put more pressure on policymakers to take off or walk back from some of those sanctions. But again, that issue, just as important as the OPEC outcome here, and arguably, given some of the downside forecasts that we're seeing in terms of crude for the second half of the year, it's up to OPEC yeah. to convince the world that it can act in a way that matters. Kelly, great seeing you. We'll see more of you tomorrow from OPEC. Uh, thank you very much. Kelly Evans, they're live out of Vienna. Coming up right here on Closing Bell, we'll be getting some currency calls, some market calls with our guests here in the studio. If you want to get involved, send through an email or tweet us telling you, uh, telling us even, your currency of choice. You're watching.